What's up guys, good morning, good afternoon, whatever it is for you. Uh, I haven't left yet, I'm still in Utah, moving to Wyoming for college. If you didn't know, if you're new to this, uh, prepare to be disappointed. What we are doing today is brakes on the Subaru. I think I should be super ricer and put a Subi sticker right here so people know it's a Subaru because it's really hard to tell. All right, we already did rear brakes not too long ago. The rotors are in rough shape, but we at least put new pads on. This side's bad, this rotor is not in good shape, but I don't have time to turn it, and I'm not gonna buy new rotors yet, but when I do, they'll be drilled and slotted, so that'll be sweet. Today we are doing fronts because the pads are pretty low. I don't think you're gonna be able to see them, maybe. There's a small view there. They're bad, they need to be done. So I bought the brake pads. Um, they asked me if, they, if from the factory the wheels were 14 inch or 15 inch, and the door says they were 16 from the factory so I just got the 15 inch brake pads honestly I'm pretty sure they're all gonna fit but hopefully these ones do just fine because I don't really have time to run back and return them but yeah I'm gonna spray off the brakes with water first because I just barely drove the car and I don't really want to be playing with hot brakes Yeah, don't pinch yourself in a jack. I just found a piece of my old cylinder head. This is the reason I had to replace it. This little this part of my valve cover bolts. The thread just snapped in half. That's weird that that's out here. Anyway, sorry if I'm blurry. Next, we have to take the wheels off. So just get your socket. I got an impact. If not, either have someone hold the brakes or you should have done it before you jacked the car up. So my bad. Also, if you're taking these off, or breaking them before you jack the car up, only slightly loosen them, then leave them on, and then jack the car up the rest of the way. Okay, so now this is what we have to work with. Um, if you have a wire brush, I recommend grinding everything um, under here off because you don't want your wheels rusting to this, especially if it's an older car. Uh, we did this at the tire shop, so it, it's just a little bit of safety, but now we have to get this piece of the caliper off. If you're doing rotors, there's a bolt back here and a bolt in the same place under it, this bolt right here, the caliper bracket bolt. Undo that and you can move the whole caliper off and then you should just be able to pull the rotor off. But we're just doing brake pads, so we got this bolt and down here is another bolt. On the back it's different, there's one bolt down here, and this is just a pin, and it just rotates up. But on this one, there's two of them, and I believe they are 12 millimeters, that's what they look like. So all we gotta do is break those. Actually 14 out of 12. This one's more stuck than I want it, so I'm just gonna cheat. And just take these bolts out. There's the bottom one, there's the top. I'm just gonna put them on my hood, which is probably not the best idea, and you should be able to just wiggle this off and it might kind of resist but a little easy at least now normally you'd want to get some wire and tie this up to the strut because if it hangs on this brake line it could rip it and that's that's a real bad deal then you got to place like the brake line but i'm just going to set it right there because i'm ghetto then you just pull the pads out one and the other these definitely needed replacing. Hopefully the camera focuses on them. They are uh, definitely getting a little worn. So this is probably three or four, 30 seconds, which is really getting down there. These don't have wear indicators. So now compare them to the new pad. So it looks like I got lucky with deciding to go with the 15 inch because they do look pretty exactly the same. There's a little notch right here that the other one didn't have the 14 inch version, but it has it on these new pads and there are no wear indicators on these pads, which is kind of shitty. If you do have a wear indicator, you'll have a little piece of metal sticking out probably till about there. And then that tells you when you need brake pads, but I don't have those, so I'm gonna have to do it without them. 
Now we have to push the piston on the brake. That's completely spaced out. On the brake caliper, we have to push the piston back in so it has enough room to fit the new pads. So first pop your hood. Supers, damn it. There we go. And there's a reason it's a bad idea to put your bolts on your hood because I almost flung them somewhere but they got caught on the ratchet. So that's it's a lucky deal for me. I'm gonna drop everything. Find your brake master cylinder. Mine's right here because it's an American car. It's gonna be on the left side of the car, the driver's side, obviously. And then just pop this cap off. Just rest it right there. Okay, sorry about the wind. This is a C-clamp, but you'll need the old brake pad too. What we're gonna do is right here, these two pistons, these little cylinder things, that's what pushes the brake pad onto the rotor so that it, uh, you know, obviously stops you. It turns kinetic energy into thermal energy, stops the car, you know. That sounded really scientific, but I wasn't trying to be. So you're gonna put an old pad right here like this, and you're gonna put a C-clamp and you're gonna clamp it down like this. You're gonna put one side on the pad and one side on the back of the caliper, and you're just gonna tighten down the C-clamp and that'll push those pistons back in. It should go down pretty easily. It should give you really no fight. If there is a fight, it might be caught on something, but, or it could just be a really old caliper. This might give me some fight, but shouldn't, it should not be hard. I am going to turn it this way, like this, yes. Okay, it's all tight. So now you just tighten it down. Go until they're all the way down, just so you know you will have no trouble getting the old one or the new pads in. And there we go. And just loosen the C-clamp a little, pull it on, take the pad out. Then as you can see, those are way pushed in compared to where they were. You can easily fit a lot in between here, so that's that's what we needed. Get your new pads. Normally, uh, the kits will come with these little, these are, I think these are guide pins, is what they're called, something like that. Normally, kits will come, brake, cal brake pad kits will come with new pins, new little metal pieces right here, these little shims. Mine didn't, and that's kind of a shame. Also, they sell grease for these. I've personally never used the grease, but it does seem like a good idea. Anyway, now you just put the new pads in. This little curved part right here goes towards the rotor, kind of common sense. Probably not really gonna be able to see, but I'll show you on the front. You wanna put it as even as you can. Okay, so now that back pad's in. Take the other one. And then as I said before, push it in as even as you can. So instead of pushing this side in first and then this side, try to push them in at the same time. It'll go a lot easier. And if you have that grease, this will go way easy. They should just push in pretty easy. Get your two bolts ready. Push this right back on the way that it went on. You're probably gonna have to squeeze these little, probably can't really see them, little rubber things. You just gotta push them in. They go in way easy. And then push your bolts in. Snug them up. Then this won't be tight yet, but that is uh, because the piston is not squeezed down yet. It's not against the pads, so this is going to move a little bit. But we have to torque these bolts, and then we're basically done. We just got to put the wheel back on. So, as I said before, the torque on these, at least for the rear ones, was 23 foot pounds. I'm just going to torque the front to 23 foot pounds as well. All right, torque wrench is set to 23. You probably can't see that at all, but I've got a weird adapter system going on because I don't want to pull out my half inch drive long sockets. So I'm just gonna cheat by using this weird adapter. It's gonna be kind of hard to get this in, so I'm sorry if you can't see, I might have to lay under the car, so. Just go until it clicks, you probably can't hear that, but it's a click. There's my short socket 14, and we should be able to get the bottom one a little bit easier now. Awkward, but we can make it work. It's just a lot of half turns. There we go, another click. All right, put your wheel back on with your tire, obviously. Try 
slide your lugs on a little. If you're doing this by hand, get them as tight as you can with car off the ground. I luckily have an electric impact. If you do use an impact, it's gonna be easy to over torque these. This is an electric one though, so I shouldn't really have too many worries. Do the star pattern. And I'm gonna tighten them down one more time. I'm going to do the other side really fast off camera. It's going to be the exact same thing, but on the other side. So the tightening and loosening is going to be flipped, but easy to figure out. So hopefully you got that. And then we'll pick it up after I do that side really fast. Okay, so this side is all done. Potato zoom. Yeah, I know. That side's completely done. Everything is torqued. So I'm going to show you how to torque your wheels if you don't know. This is a Subaru, so it torques at 75 foot-pounds for the lug nuts. The newer Subarus torque at 90. I think they did that in like 2005 or something like that. If you have a Honda, it's going to be 80 or 85. A Toyota, it's most likely 80. It varies from every car. Most imports, though, they're going to be anywhere 80 to 90. Some domestics usually are anywhere from 100 to 150, depending on if it's a car or a truck. So, sorry, that was probably awful awesome lighting. Anyway, you can look up the torque specs. You can find it on a forum. It's not going to be that hard, so... Okay, so lift it up just barely enough so that you can get the jack stand out, put it to the side, drop the car halfway just till the car is on the ground, just barely, you know, that's, the tire's not going to move, pull up your wheels, in the star pattern, then after your wheels are torqued, drop the car the rest of the way. Now you're basically done. Put all your tools away, you don't want to leave them out. If you stay organized, your life's going to be a lot better later on. Okay, now you're going to want to pump your brakes a little bit. This is going to tighten up those calipers, so just squeeze it, just barely, go kind of slow. I'll show you why in a second. It's going to get really hard as long as you have power brakes. And I could just be pushing it out of the reservoir right now, hopefully I'm not. Just do it until it's got a little resistance. And then up here in the hood, the reason we loosened this is so it didn't hold pressure, so it didn't basically explode. And as you can tell, or maybe you can't tell, it's wet around these edges. When we push those calipers back in, the pistons on the calipers, it overflowed. That's why we popped this, so it wouldn't just explode out the cap. And you're gonna wanna wipe this up. Brake fluid's really harsh on stuff, like rubber hoses and paint and all that. So I'm gonna wipe this up, make it all clean. I just put the cap back on. I, this one's just a push and twist one. Here, it's tight. Now, just to be sure that you pumped it enough, make sure your calipers are tight. Start the car and that'll give you the power brakes and then you can pump it even more and make sure it's all hard and good. That's what she said. Just pump it till it gets real hard. Then you should be all good. Now just go out and dust them. Should work. Um, if you go for a long drive and you get out and you smell burning, especially near your brakes, you probably didn't use the that caliper guide bolt grease. That helps the calipers move back and forth because your brakes are supposed to be really close, maybe even rubbing a little, but they're not supposed to drag on it. I have a problem with sticky pads on this wheel, but my rotor's all fucked up, so I'm not surprised, but. Anyway, that is how you do your brakes. I hope that helps. Most of you might be COD kids, so hopefully you enjoy these videos, but um, yeah, comment what I should do. I'm about to leave for my trip tomorrow. I'm probably gonna video that. All these are probably gonna go up in an odd sequence after I move, so yeah, it's, it's gonna be interesting, but rear brakes are done, front brakes are done. Roofed is fixed, perfect, perfectly fixed. New wheels looking nice, I gotta give it a wash. I deleted my power steering, deleted my AC, at least from the belts for right now. We'll go back in later. Pulled the engine, did a bunch of work. Yeah, it's, it's been an interesting trip, but I will talk to you guys in the next video. That'll probably be me driving somewhere, and yeah, hope you enjoyed, peace.